everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. You see, we are grateful to the Lord for another opportunity to share with you God's perspective and to become everything, and I mean everything, God created us to be. Now listen, before we get started on today or tonight's episode, you know, actually, this week we will be doing something totally different. You see, people of God, as I was preparing for this week, the Lord impressed upon me to share with his people some answers to their questions, some perspective to their thoughts. You see, it is our mission here at Full of Life Ministries is to tackle difficult issues. It's to provide for God's people clear and easy to understand answers to the various issues we face here in our world. And so this week we will be doing here on Full of Life Ministries podcast questions that you may have concerning the word of the Lord. And these are some of the common questions that our listeners ask about. And so we want for God's people to have confidence in God's word. For the Bible tells us in Psalms 119 verse 105, it says, God's word is a lamp before our feet and a light for our journey. It also declares in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So for today or tonight, we're going to call this our session, Q&A session, part one. <laughs> we're going to be answering some difficult questions that we believe that will hopefully answer some of the questions that you may have concerning the Bible. And these are some general questions that we have collected over a period of our ministry. And hopefully, it will create a confidence in you to have total trust in the word of the Lord. So let's get started. <laughs> Question number one. What does it mean when we hear the term that the Bible is inspired? Great question. Early in my ministry, I struggled with this word inspired because in my early years, many people inspired me, motivated me to, to, to do well, to be successful. And so I would hear the word inspired. And when the Lord called me, I had to learn for myself, what does it really mean that the Bible is inspired? Is it on the same level as being inspired by a human being? Or is there different levels to the word inspired? Well, listen, now I believe Scripture gives us the true meaning of inspiration. It really, really does. Yes, it does inspire us to live a full and meaningful life. But when you study the actual definition of the word inspire, I want to highly recommend this to all of our listeners from around the world that you purchase, invest, in a strong concordance study Bible. You see, in this Bible, it breaks down the word either in Hebrew, Greek, 
or Aramaic. And this will help you to understand the definition of the words in the Bible. So the word inspiration in the Bible simply means God breathe. Because scripture is breathed out by God. Yes, the Bible was written by men. But it was God who permitted them to exercise their own personalities, their talents. But it was written under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And because of this, this message from God is considered errorless. You see, these men had their own style and flair. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit worked through these individuals to communicate God's message to the world. Every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting and for training character so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. And as found in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verses 16 through 17. So understand, when you read God's word, it is God who spoke through men, but it was the Holy Spirit who actually helped these men pen the words that came from the throne of God. And because of this, this is what inspires us to do everything that is good. So that was question number one. Question number two, how can we be sure that the Bible is reliable? Another great question. When we compare other historical books, think about this people to God. All of the books that we were able to read growing up from ages or from grades one through 12 and beyond through college, all of the historical books, not only is the Bible reliable, it is more reliable than any other writings in the world. So when we think about the reliability of God's word, it needs to have the highest level of truthfulness. The word of the Lord has to stand up against every single attack. And it's so critical that accuracy is in it's been set in place because writings that are historically and factually correct and that have been faithfully preserved over time would be would be considered reliable one of the other things that we can really rest on is that ver verification gives us confidence it makes it easier for us to determine whether an ancient work is worthy of trust. And the third thing is, we also have witnesses that have given us confidence in God's word. Second Peter, the first chapter, verses 16 through 19, it tells us, we didn't repeat crafty myths when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Quite the contrary. We witnessed his majesty with our own eyes. He received honor and glory from God the Father when a voice came to him from the magnificent glory saying, this is my dearly loved son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. In addition, we have a most reliable prophetic word 
and you would do well to pay attention to it just as you would to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. So we have eyewitnesses. We have the truth of verification. We also understand that everything in God's word is accurate. It's errorless. It's authentic. And we can rely on the word of the Lord. And last question. Number three. What is the meaning of the term canon of scripture? When we think of this term canon, it simply means the rule of law that is used to determine if a book measures up to a standard. You see, God's word is canonical. At the moment, it was written. This is very important to know because Christianity does not start by defining God or Jesus Christ or salvation. The basis of Christianity is found in the authority of Scripture. Because if we cannot identify what Scripture is, then we cannot properly distinguish any theological truth from error. You have to understand, people of God, God's principles is his law in action. And because God's standards is the highest standard on the face of this earth, we can rely that it is truth. Now, Psalms 119 verses, verse 160, Psalms 119 Verse 160 says, The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. And this canon of trust is designed to reveal himself and to communicate to mankind truth. It's designed to communicate to mankind a standard, a standard that's above every other standard standard in our world. And so in closing, we wanted to answer some common yet difficult questions concerning the word of the Lord. Now listen, if you have more questions about God's word, email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, full of life sd at gmail.com you can find us on twitter at at full of life sd and you can also find us on instagram full of life ministries i hope and pray that you did get something out of these three questions that we have posed in our first session part one that's entitled q a questions and answers so people of God, we love you with the love of Christ and we're going to pray right now. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. Lord God, we just ask that the answers that were given to these questions, that your people will never waver in their trust in your word. God, let them embrace your word. Let them love studying your word because everything that's in your word is to help us, is to equip us, is designed for us to live in total freedom from the traps and the snares of the enemy. I pray for every listener under the sound of my voice that they will embrace your word and that they will invest in your word by making sure they have clear understanding of your word. Your word has standed the test of time. Even when it's been challenged, it is the greatest selling book in the history of the world. 
And there's a reason for that, God, because your truth always prevail. Bless your people, watch over them, strengthen them, and allow your words to be lamps to our feet and a light for our journey. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. People of God, pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to do this. In Jesus' name, God bless. <laughs>